Welcome to another Eternal video. In this one, we're going to take a deeper dive into the new set Battle Lines mechanics and keywords. Battle Lines is going to focus on five alliances that are each made up of three different factions. I'm super excited for a three faction set. It adds a type of gameplay and the deck composition that's just very different than the average set. That being said, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Let's get right into it. The first alliance is Skullhaven. Skullhaven is composed of Shadow, Justice, and Primal cards, and their set mechanic is Renown. Now, Renown is a returning mechanic from Defiance, which is actually before I started playing Eternal. But it essentially means the first time you play a spell or weapon on the unit, you get the effect. So this is an A plus B mechanic. That means you need A, units with Renown, and B, some type of spell or weapon to target it. Renown ends up playing out a little more finicky than you would think, just because you don't always want to target your unit with a spell or weapon in a given scenario. So you don't always end up getting the effect when you want it or at all. That being said, if you are a more assertive deck, the best case scenario, imagine Daring Pathcutter here attacks as a 4-3, your opponent blocks it with a 5-5, you use Finest Hour or some sort of buff spell on it, it wins the combat and you draw a card and gain Aegis. Obviously, that's like the best case scenario, but you see how that isn't always, it requires all of that setup for you to want to take advantage of it. They're also introducing Renown on some units with Ambush. They mentioned by ambushing it in and then playing a fast spell like Finest Hour on it, you can turn the tables on your opponent. The issue with that is not only do you need to have Canny Hunter and a fast spell in your hand, you need to have enough power to play Canny Hunter and the fast spell to trigger the Renown and have a situation where you want to trigger the Renown, if you have a lot of units with Renown, and this ends up being a decent deck, you do get paid off better by being more assertive, and you want to make sure you have many fast spells on the cheaper side. That way you can still attack with your units, trigger your Renown with a cheap fast spell, and then play a unit. I really don't think that's going to play out all that well. There might be like one just particularly strong Renown unit that finds its way in your deck, and maybe if you're on the more aggressive side, you have some pump spells to actually trigger it, but I have a feeling this isn't going to be a huge synergistic deck or real format-defining mechanic. So the second alliance is the Grove Alliance, which is made up of Fire, Time, and Primal, and their new mechanic is sweet. It's called Recruit. So Recruit is a game action, that means, so Recruit is short for this effect. Think about how Hunt is short for mill X cards, X equal to the Hunt number, etc., etc. So Recruit is short for draw a unit from the top five cards of your deck. If it costs less than this card, play it, and you put the rest on the bottom. Now, this is insane only because very often this is going to be a two for one you net card advantage on your opponent and the player that accrues more card advantage over a given limited game is often more favored to win that game that being said recruit can miss if you don't hit a unit in the top five you don't get anything the upside is if you get a unit with a cheaper cost than the spell you played you get to play it on the field for free, which will really help you apply pressure to your opponent. Deck considerations for a recruit deck, you want to make sure you have a high unit count. That way you have a high likelihood of hitting a unit with each recruit effect in your deck. Now we see it's not even only on units, it's on spells too. Also similar to Hunt. Basically, all of these are going to be great because you're just getting more advantage and value from each of your spells versus your opponent's spells. So I'm super excited to play with Recruit. So the next alliance we're going to look at is the Hive Caravan, which is made up of Time, Fire, and Justice. And their new mechanic is a battle skill called Nomad. So Nomad is always followed by a number, 
and Nomad means this unit has flying on your turn and plus X plus X, where X is equal to the Nomad number on the enemy turn. So essentially you get an evasive flyer on your turn and a larger defensive ground unit on your opponent's turn. Going into some rules stuff, if you equip Pilgrim's Pack onto Hexamancer, all it does is add the Nomad numbers together. So Hexamancer would get Nomad 4. There's no double flying, so all it really does is give you an extra stat boost on your opponent's turn to make it a better defender, which I really don't see the value of that unless you're putting this on something that doesn't already have Nomad. That way, at least you're getting a benefit from giving it flying on your turn. The next alliance is Steel Warren, which is represented by Justice, Time, and Shadow, and their mechanic Bolster is very synergistic. So essentially Bolster is once per turn when you gain health or armor, you do whatever the listed effect on the card is. So for this type of mechanic, this is another A plus B mechanic, want to make sure you have lots of cheap and preferably repeatable ways of gaining life or armor. One of the immediate things that comes to mind is anything with life steal. That way the unit can continually attack over and over again, get into combat, and you're always going to be able to trigger the bolster. So this seems sweet. Pumping out one, two soldiers with Aegis is just awesome. So the last alliance is, well, it's the Hermit's army, I guess. So not really really an alliance. They're made up of Primal, Fire, and Shadow, a really sick combination. And their mechanic is Devour, which is interesting. So Devour X means when played, you may destroy that many cards from the top of the enemy void to get the listed effect. So essentially what that means is you remove the top two cards of your enemy's void from the game completely they just disappear some rule stuff is if it does have void bound it'll skip it and go to the cards below it's kind of finicky in that obviously you need ways of milling your opponent's deck for your devour mechanic to be able to trigger the effect won't go off if your opponent doesn't have two or more cards in their void to trigger voltaic viper's effect this is a tough one to rate because in the course of normal limited games like cards just go to each player's void, units die, spells are played, etc. Hunt milled a lot of units from the top of the deck, but I assume the draft format is only going to have one Behemoth Satera pack, so there probably won't be that much hunt. So for example, Devour 4, I mean, that's going to take a while to get to. Then like, you zero out your opponent's void for any of your other devour things. Now we see a rare here, when an enemy card is devoured, he gets a plus one plus one buff, so there could be payoffs for every time you devour that might make this more synergistic, but this definitely reads as you don't build your deck around devour particularly, you just have certain good devour cards that will get stronger when your opponent happens to have that many cards in their void. Without seeing the full set, I'm like skeptical at unless they bring Hunt back in a pretty big way into this set, I struggle to see how you can consistently get like, we're already talking, look at Devour 3, Devour 4, like three cards with Devour, we're talking about three, six, nine cards in the enemy void. That's like most the amount an average limited game will get to. An interesting mechanic, this is another one where I'm very curious to see the full spoiler. This set looks super sweet. Like I said, I've been waiting for a three faction set. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. That way when we go over the commons and uncommons, you won't miss that since that's super important for your draft and league gameplay. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope I'll catch you on the channel for more eternal content. Peace.